Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast, where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Leslie Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world, and the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity, and it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. Hey loves, it's me, Leslie, your host, and I am all by myself. All by myself. I won't sing to you. I actually cannot. So we'll just stop right there. Um, (laughs) So we are doing a solo episode. The team and I were talking about it and we realized that you probably don't know like how I got here and you probably actually don't know a lot about Brad because Brad is is not exactly on the social. So first of all, if you have been with us since the beginning, thank you so much. If this is your first episode of the Be It Till You See It podcast, this is an interesting, this is a unique episode. And so feel free to pause this now and go listen to some interviews and some recaps if you want to get in on like the behind, like what is the usual of this podcast. But um, you can also listen to this one as a first one and then go back and listen to those ones. You get to do you over here at the Be It Till You See It podcast. In fact, that is what being it till you see it is. It is acting like the person who knows what they're doing (laughs) in something that they want to do. And this podcast has been like a literal Be It Till You See It experience like an open like an open experiment right I don't even know if they have those things but like an open like anyone could just be watching at the at the at the same time so here's the deal I am a verbal processor I actually freaking love interviews and recaps because I have a guest and I'm talking to someone and it's a lot more fun to play off of someone so being that this is my first solo episode, it probably isn't going to be perfect and I hope that you love it anyways because they'll just get better They'll just get better from here. And we all have to start somewhere. Um, Here we go. I um, did not believe, I didn't even know I could be a Pilates instructor. Actually, I didn't even know what it was growing up. So when people ask you like, what did you want to be when you grew up? I don't freaking know. I want to be a lot of things. I want to be anything that got me out of the town I was in. That's for sure. I was like, I'll be a doctor. I'll be a lawyer. I knew I never wanted to be poor because um, I grew up in a family that struggled with money. And... um, I knew I didn't want that. I knew I didn't want to live in that small ass town because I definitely didn't feel like it belonged there. And I knew we couldn't afford college, but I had to go. Like I just had to do it. And I was like, here's, here's a, here's what I freaking love about when I think about who I was back then. There's a lot of parts that I'm embarrassed about. There's a lot of parts that I'm like, oh my God, really? There's a lot of insecurity. Who didn't have that when they're in high school and junior high, but there was a ton. However, I was on such a mission to move the heck out and go to college that I found a way, right? And we're talking like my SAT score sucked, but I found a way. I didn't have the money or the person to co-sign for my student loans, but I found a way. And I real and I did. I got myself that first August after my high, my senior year of high school. Um, after graduating, I was at a school that I definitely couldn't afford, um, and I just wanted to be there. I share that with you because I think we probably have forgotten. I think, I think I know I forgot the story, but you may have forgotten like just the tenacity that you had when you were younger, the tenacity that you had before you thought you could be found out in a way that people would be disappointed. The tenacity that you had before you got married or had kids or had responsibilities, like we freaking tenacity. Okay. Right. And so one thing I want you to do is really look back at your life and actually write down the data of the times that you actually did things even when you're scared, did things when you felt confident. Like think about um, episode, I want to say it was three with Rob Mack, but it was like um, your, um, is it three? Yeah. Uh, happiness uh, islands and happiness valleys. Like think about your confident islands and your confident valleys, right? So I want you to go back and I want you to look that over because you need those lists. You need that information to help you be it till you see it. And I know that I need that because I, I use those times all the time. Like something I'm so grateful for in this journey that I'm on is that so much stuff is actually documented, um, in different ways between testimonials and reviews and podcasts I've been on and magazines. Like we document, like the team documents everything. And so when I'm feeling like down on myself or like nothing is working or, 
no one is listening or we're, we're just somehow not reaching the people I want to reach. I look at all of the data that shows that we are, that doesn't mean we can't do better, but it doesn't mean we're not, not doing it right. But that it means it's happening. It's just, um, sometimes we don't all, we need to look at the data. We need to look at the evidence and I have a guest I want to have on someday. And he talks a lot about that with imposter syndrome. It's like looking at the data. So um, got myself to college, became a store manager of a high-end jewelry store. Let me tell you, talk about imposter syndrome. I did not grow up with nice, like designer things. I grew up with nice things, but you know, my parents, uh, found, found, um, some amazing people who gave us their nice things, but I didn't, I didn't grow up like being able to buy those things. We're talking like high-end designer stuff. And so I definitely felt this urge to, to try to be the person who would all that, that those prices weren't weird or those prices weren't awkward or buying gifts over those prices wasn't a weird thing. And I had to like act like this person who could buy us have a hundred dollar purse <laughs> that they don't need. And, um, let me tell you, you might be like, Leslie, how's that help you in life? It helped me in so many ways because what it really helped me do was realize that money was not something that was bad or that only people who are like bad people have, or that there's a finite amount of money in that job. I learned so much about the types of people who have money. I learned that not to judge a book by its cover because some of the people who spent the most money had the rattiest t-shirts on. And I also learned that there is so much that there's an abundance of everything and anything. And so whatever it is that you're wanting in this world, I want you to picture that I want you to visualize that. I want you to get really clear what that is. Who are you? What are you wearing? Where are you at? Why? Because all those things matter. And I and you cannot be it till you see it if you don't know who you're trying to be. <laughs> it's not possible. So recently I interviewed Dr. Philippe Dion and he talks about how our vision has an entire lobe. And then it's like so serendipitous. I heard something that was like our eyes and ears only see and hear what our brain is looking for. So they're not like all these independent senses. Like if you picture it, then your brain is going to look for evidence for that. Doesn't like dissonance. So it's going to look for evidence for that. And so you're going to see and hear all the evidence for your thoughts to be true. Whatever those thoughts are, whether you like it or not, everyone is doing this. So the more, the more of us that are doing it for the good, the better. Right. And so, um, in doing that, in, 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 in seeing how much abundance there was, I started to realize how much I could actually have and what, what possibilities were out there. Right. And so when I was told I should become a plies instructor, I'm not going to lie. I definitely was like, what me, I could do that. But then I like, but then I pictured myself as a plies instructor you know, it helped that Lululemon was a big deal back then. So I, so I could picture myself on the new Lululemon. And I pictured myself teaching these huge classes. And I pictured myself at like wonderless types of events, teaching hundreds of people on a grassy knoll. Let me just tell you that is beautiful and flies. So, so I've taught hundreds of people indoors, but, um, I, I started to think about it and visualize it. And so then I said yes to becoming a teacher. And I'll never forget, I was a brand new teacher and I had this opportunity to teach 30 people in a room, which doesn't sound like a lot of people, right? To some of you who've never taught, it's not like a lot of people, especially if you hear the guests of ours that we've had that are like, I speak to 10,000 people in a room. Okay, <laughs> 30 people is not that many. But when you've only taught two or five in a room, 30 people feels like a lot. And I remember given this opportunity and being so scared being so like, Oh my God, what if they find out? What if they think I'm not good enough? What are they, what, what if they want to leave? Um, and then I remembered that I could act like the person who could t- teach 30 people. And I learned that from my time being in retail. So y'all, every step, every single experience you've had has got, got you to here and it was for nothing, right? Every single experience you had made you who you are, gave you a skill. And so I visualized myself being someone who can teach 30 people. And then I started asking, well, what would I do? What would I say? How would I handle this? What would I do? What would a person who teaches 30 people all the time think about someone leaving? And I really wrapped my head around it. 
And then I went in there. I walked across that stage. It's showtime. Taught this class. I'm not going to lie. The first five exercises, I was like, oh, gosh, crickets and like just some really, really interesting fitness faces. And then somebody smiled and was like, yeah, that was hard. And then I was like, oh, okay, he liked it. Okay, if he liked it, then maybe other people like it. And all of a sudden, I felt like everybody was for me, and they were cheering me on, and they were cheering me on so much, they all left comment cards. And that's how I got classes at a gym four years before I should have <laughs> without any other without any other audition. Um, and so everything happens for you. And so all of that led me to multiple trainings and multiple different opportunities of, of, of managing studios, renting studios, having a, my own studio. Um, and I'm not going to lie. It was scary every single time. <laughs> every single thing, every new level is a new devil and it's always scary. But something that I realized along the way is whenever I would fight things, whenever I would pretend to not know, it felt worse. And it always felt better when I would picture the dream, picture the goal, get really clear on it, and then and then take the steps that a person who had achieved that would do. And it's an interesting skill set. It's a muscle like anything else, and you have to work it out. So if you're like, Leslie, yeah, I get it, but I don't know how to do this next step. It's a muscle. If you were doing a bicep curl with two pounds and you never worked at the gym, you'd be like, okay, I could do that. But if I gave you a 15-pound weight, you've never done a bicep curl, it's going to feel really hard. So you have to build yourself up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have days where you're not being it until you see it. But you keep trying, right? You keep trying. So Fast forward many years, we get here and um, I wanted to have this podcast. And I remember knowing I wanted to have a podcast and seeing how the podcast would be in its like finished form. And um, and I then I had to I had to interview someone and I'd never done that before. So you know what I did? I literally asked all the people in my memberships if they would go live with me. I said, please pick times I need to practice interviewing people. Because something I never thought I was was someone who asked good questions. You should really be careful about the things you say about yourself because your brain is listening. And so if you tell yourself, I don't ask good questions, then you think that your brain's going to be like, let me show you about this good question. Like, (laughs) it's not going to happen. So um, it actually makes me think of the recent episode with Casey Arvidas where we talked about like having a fixed mindset and thinking that you're born with a fixed mindset because then you actually have a fixed mindset around your fixed mindset, which gets really meta, she said. And um so anyways, but here's the deal. So I, um, I didn't, I didn't want to be someone who believed they didn't ask good questions. I wanted to be someone who believed that they did. So I literally said, okay, I'm going to interview all these people. And I practiced interviewing them as if they were going to be on a podcast with me. They were just on Instagram lives. And I just practiced. And you know what? The first interview I had to do was my friend Alex Street. Um, You can listen to his episode. It's amazing. And at the end, he's like, how was that? How do you feel? And I was like, oh, my first one. I was shaking the whole time. (laughs) And and the first one was the hardest one, just like this episode right here. This is going to be the hardest solo episode I'll ever do. And then after this, it's going to be so easy. So one thing I realized in that interview with him was that I just acted like the person who knew what they were doing. And it wasn't perfect, okay? Our microphone doesn't even sound that good. Sound that we had a new one after that. <laughs> but um, but the point is, is that like being until you see it is a muscle. And you're not going to be it till you see it to be a speaker of 10,000 people tomorrow. You'll probably be it till you see to speak to like an open forum of five people, right? And then it'll be more and it'll be more. And you will start starting off small is not a bad thing. It's not like an underestimation. It's actually allowing you to have room for success, room for success. So now that this podcast has passed over a hundred and something episodes, um, we are still being it till we see it in a lot of ways because we've passed a hundred episodes. That's a huge freaking deal. Thank you for listening. But I don't want to just do a hundred episodes. I want to do a thousand episodes. I don't want just 40 reviews. I want thousands. I don't want just a few hundred listeners whose lives we change. I want millions. Why? Why? Because I know every single freaking one of you that's listening to this, every single one of you is powerful and amazing and you're here to do freaking wonderful things. And, and you can't do it if you don't believe you can. And you can't do it if you keep saying when I'm ready and you can't do it if you're like waiting till someone deems you ready, deems you the one. No one is walking around knighting you as the 
<laughs> next, whatever. They're not doing it. If you want something, stop waiting for permission. So then how would you be some, like how, who is someone? What are the qualities? What are the things that they do with someone who doesn't wait for permission? What are those qualities? What would they be doing right now? If you were someone who wasn't waiting for permission, wasn't waiting to feel ready, what would you be doing right now? That is your homework assignment. So what is my homework assignment? Well, one of the things is I have been asking people who I was afraid would laugh in my face if I asked them to be on the podcast, to be on the podcast. And they didn't laugh in my face. And they also didn't get me crickets. They actually said yes. So now I have to interview them. Definitely scared as <laughs> But I'm so excited. I'm so excited to bring those interviews to you. I'm so excited to to be to to see what I become because of those interviews. I'm so excited to see who you become because of those interviews. Every single one of those interviews is a step towards being the person that I want to be. It's to, it's helping you be the person that you want to be. We're all doing this together, right? I just happen to be on this side of the microphone. You're on that side of the AirPods, but we're doing this. We're all doing this together. We're all on this mission to be the version of ourselves that we cannot wait to be. And what is so cool about that is when you're acting as if that person someday, the per, you're, it's no longer acting. You were just that person. Like it's just like, it just, it happens and you don't even realize it. Um, so I am asking guests that scare the hell out of me. That's one way that I'm being until I see it with this podcast. Um, in my life, one thing that I'm doing to be until I see is I am actually doing a lot of research on investing um, I really, 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 really want to create generational wealth, even though I have no generations below me. <laughs> I don't have kids, but I want to take that money and reinvest it to communities. I want to, I want to reinvest it to female owned businesses. I want to uh, help other people be it till they see it if they don't have the funds. And so to do that, I have to create that wealth. How do I create that wealth? Well, I have to educate myself on actual wealth. And so um, I visualized this, right? And I've been visualizing this for two years. And you know, it's so crazy when you visualize something that you are, we talked about this, your eyes and your ears start to see what the brain is looking for. And in the last six months, the amount of people I've been introduced to, the books they've suggested me reading, the things that um, I have gotten clarity on have really popped the bubble on like how complicated this thing is and show me that like I don't have to have a, like some sort of like economic engineering degree. I could actually be a normal human being who can create this wealth as this Pilates instructing <laughs> podcast business coach. And, um, it feels closer than ever. It feels so possible. So one of the ways that I'm going to make sure I read these books, because how many of us, well, oh, I need to read that book and we don't read it. One of the ways I'm going to make sure I read this, these books is I'm going to get a library card so I can be the reader that I want to be, be the person who educates herself. So I feel like if I have the, a little bit of pressure that the books are due at a certain time, then I will get the reading done. And I'm very excited because I used to be like a consumer of books. I like, I just could read a book a week. And so I want to, I want to go back to that. I know that's in me and I'm really excited to do it with this challenge. Okay. So the next thing in my be it till we see it journey where I am at is really trying to in, be a person who enjoys the messy middle. And this, mm, this lovers is freaking hard. This is not the easiest thing um, because it is so much easier to get frustrated, mad, stomp your feet, cry, and feel like the woe is me, right? Um, and I think you should know that in businesses it is never like the stories we tell ourselves about other people's lives and businesses from social media it is rarely whatever that is. And it's not because they're lying and it's not because they're faking it, right? Every single one of my posts is authentic AF, but the stories we tell ourselves when we look at other people's posts is where we put on this like other layer of like, Oh my God, how amazing is that? And so anyways, um, there are every single day, something will go wrong. <laughs> when you have a business, there's a thing that doesn't work on technology. There's an email that doesn't go through when it's supposed to like the, the dogs chewed up the carpet and now we have to tile a room. And so I'm behind on filming. Like there's just always stuff going on. Um, and, for the last six months, I've been freaking fighting it. Like maybe not six months, but at least three, like really fighting, fighting this, the things that go wrong. And I actually want to be the person who sits there and sees the things go wrong and observes them and then figures out the first next step around that thing without getting upset or getting angry or losing the joy. Cause I get to do this. 
And I share that with you because I, I know that you're like, you want the same thing, right? Many of you are moms and you want to be this mom who's like so excited and is, and is showing them joy and happiness and love. And then like the dog spills the milk over the backpack and you're running out the door. And (laughs) I don't know how the dog did that, but basically it's a whole hot mess express and you're just frustrated and you're upset. And I just threw a pen. That's what that was like dramatic moment. (laughs) But like, um, you're just upset. Right. And then you're like, Oh, I don't want to be this mad, angry mom who lost it over spilt milk. Right. So we all have these things. We're all like, Oh, I don't want to do that. And so I actually want to be someone who's like, not that I won't have feelings or not that things won't make me upset, but that, that I don't, lose it before I've actually observed the whole story. And so how am I doing that? Well, I'm making sure I do my morning pages because whenever I do my morning pages, I always feel better the whole day. I'm also doing my breath work the beginning of the morning because that makes me feel a much, feel much more centered. And then I am trying out different things right now. I'm trying out either taking a deep breath or asking for, I'm trying out asking for things to be sent to me versus told to me or to have me to have them told me at meetings versus just like interrupting. I'm trying out different things to just set myself up for success at this. And the other thing I'm doing is going is actually telling people this what I'm working on so that I have this awareness around it, right? We all have this, we all have this conscious this awareness around what we're doing. So if you are actually telling people, I don't want to spend money and then you're spending money, they're going to be like, and you're going to be like, and no one's probably going to say anything, but you're going to have that awareness. Like, Oh, I'm spending money. And I just told them I don't want to do that. So I'm setting myself up for some growth in that area to be it till I see it in how I want to be in my business because I'm not really enjoying the way I am right now. And that's okay. So it's okay to be like, "Mm, I don't really like this about myself. That's what we get to do in this life. We get to work on it. And that's great. So, um, I hope that was really fun. I hope that was really, I don't know, informative. And, um, if you like this, let me know, DM me, um, at the be it pod or ask questions or feel free to leave us a review. Um, the next thing I want to leave you with on this pod is just some things that are actually, I'm really like, they're freaking helping me so much right now. And I'm really obsessed with, so one is my hydro jug. Oh my God. I have this half gallon stainless steel jug and it's got this massive straw inside. I don't have to hold the, I don't have to tilt the jug back to drink it. I know that sounds so dumb, but, um, a, it always spills all over me. And then usually you have to like take the lid off, which is so annoying. So this just has a little cap, flip it back. And then you just like, like a sippy cup, (laughs) you just, drink out of it. So I don't have to tilt it anywhere. I'm not spilling anything. And it's making me drink so much water. I'm drinking two a day, which is a gallon of water plus where I get the water and everything else. The other thing that I freaking love, and you may have heard about this before, this isn't anything new, but my chocolate collagen brings me freaking joy in my coffee every morning. It is the best. And by the way, if you want to get really fancy, you can dust some of it on your, um, like almond butter toast or something like that. It's so good. Um, and then a couple other things I'm loving at night. I do a little gua sha situation. Um, and that has been really fun for me because it's really meditative and, um, it, you know, it just makes me feel like I'm doing something for my, my, my looks to look good the next day. (laughs) Um, there's apparently a lot of science behind it, but at least it feels, it feels really good. It feels like a massage my face and I really love it. And especially at the end of the night when I'm when it's tempting to like grab your phone, I can't grab my phone and guasha. I'm, I'm not a drummer. I don't, I can't have like one hand doing one thing and one hand doing another. So you have to like have your eyes closed and you could wish call yourself. I am loving my red light therapy. I actually turn it on while I'm doing my morning pages. Um, and so that has been really fun just to kind of double up. Cause you're like, how do you do all these things? Well, I have my red light therapy while I'm doing my morning pages. And then, um, I also am loving my greens and juice in the morning. It is been really awesome. It feels really good. It's an instant 12 ounces of water, which really kickstarts the day. And I'm really loving Brad joining me on the morning walks. So those are some great things. I will say, I would love to hear what your favorite short shorts, like bike shorts are workout shorts, because it is hot AF here in Vegas. And so, um, since I can't walk around in my bathing suit, I guess I could walk around my bathing suit, but that's not really comfortable. I'm just (laughs) buying up the world's shortest bike shorts because the more of my legs that can fill the AC, the better. Um, (laughs) 
Yeah. So those are what I love. So I, um, again, thank you for listening to the story of how I got here to the be it till you see it moments I'm taking. I want to hear what you're doing and to these favorite things. If you like these solo episodes or you want more, or you just have a topic you want me to go over, let us know. We, this podcast is here for you, right? It's totally here to help you. Um, it helps me on my journey too, but it really is like for you, for your ears. We want to know, and we'll have an episode with Brad as well. And if you like these, we can do them more often. Um, we can drop them every quarter. You tell us, we want to hear from you. And then finally, I want to know how you're being it till you see it in your life. That's what I want. So tell me in the podcast at the, um, at Instagram at the be it pod and let us know so we can celebrate you. So we can celebrate you. Yeah. Because the more we celebrate ourselves, the easier it is for us to realize how far we freaking come. All right, my loves. Thank you so much for listening to this solo episode with me. And until next time, be it till you see it. That's all I got for this episode of the be it till you see it podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review and follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day. Be It Till You See It is a production of As The Crows Fly Media. It's written, produced, filmed, and recorded by your host, Leslie Logan, and me, Brad Kroll. Our associate producer is Amanda Fratarelli. Kevin Perez at Desenio handles all of our audio editing. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music. And our branding by designer and artist Gianfranco Chofi. Special thanks to our designer, Jaira Mandal, for creating all of our visuals, which you can't see because this is a podcast, and our digital producer, Jay Pedroso, for editing all the video each week so you can. And to Angelina Herrico for transcribing each of our episodes so you can find them on our website. And finally, to Meredith Crowell for keeping us all on point and on time.